Hey guys and welcome to a new video. Today I want to talk a little bit about my Atlas passive strategy, my currency farming strategy that I'm currently using. And if I'm honest, early on, um, this has actually been very, 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 very profitable because I literally have like two chaos per map investment and I get actually huge returns. So it's always like the question, what is huge returns? You know, do I make a mirror a day? Do I make like, I don't know, like, it's always like questionable what is a lot for somebody. But I honestly, for farming today, I don't know, like today, like eight hours and yesterday, a couple hours, I probably made around 20 divines just by blowing up legions. And this is basically what brings fun and joy to me, right? As I said earlier in the uh, league, or even before, I said like, you know, this league, I'm feeling blowing up legions. And yesterday I revamped my Wave Conviction Ignite into um, a Val Arc Ignite. Um, just because I know Val Arc and even the, the combination with Ignite and everything with the Prolif, this is actually just stupid when it comes to clear. You know, one Val Arc um, and sometimes you even one shot a Legion just like that. And it's just super, super fun. So I decided to revamp my Atlas Passive Tree to a Legion farming strategy. And yeah, as I said, like just today alone, I dropped five flat divines. I mean, obviously you cannot really expect everybody to drop five divines a day. Maybe some get more, some get less. You know, it's always like a bit of a question mark. What is a stable income, right? But not only did I get like a bunch of divines already and I spent like literally like over 10 divines in my gear today. Um, I also get all the other kind of currencies right whatever it's like fragments scarabs breach whatever it is i'm passively generating um the um invitations over here i get diff cards i get essences whatever in the legion drops you know and what is my investment well basically what i'm doing here is the low the, the poor man's strat okay so basically one of these rusted legion scarabs is about two chaos in bulk you know so i think the last time i bought like 60 chaos for 40 something or i don't know it was definitely cheap and that's what i do i take one legion uh scarab the rusted one just to activate the legion i have my dune set up basically over here with the favorite dunes what i'm talking about in a little bit and that's pretty much all i'm doing i'm not using anything i'm neither like i'm not using any sextants i'm literally doing the poor man's strat over here literally two chaos and self-sustained map okay so i would say let's run a map and then we're going to talk about how you make profit with that and so on so i'm as i said nothing over here right just a normal one i'm not even using the six chaos legion because i don't see the reason for it obviously in normal cases, it would be the more you spend, the more you get out, right? But since I'm a broke fuck, I'm just going with the normal one. I don't see a point where I'm spending six chaos for a legion if I can just take the cheap one for two chaos and call it a day, right? Good. So basically, Val Arc, I mean, you just run around, uh, kill st things off with my Arc, and then just ignite, and you know, the typical thing. Um, and then you can just use your Val Arc in between, and this has like the most stupid clear ever like I'm, I'm clearing so many screens with just one touch um it's pretty insane right um i'm also using some shrines some some strong boxes like the typical thing that doesn't really delay my time right and when i see a lot of mods i can just drag a little bit uh, over here and then i just press one val arc and like literally everything is blowing up right it's very enjoyable but as soon as i see a legion approaching uh which is on the minimap basically uh, burning ground. I mean, there is a lot of modifiers that really hurt, especially early on. Yo, what is this loot, man? Okay, now I have my Val Arc ready. I pop the Legion. I can, like, gather some other mobs in between. It doesn't really matter too much. And then I just blow this shit up, you know? It's not always gonna be a one-shot, but you have with the Legion passives, you have, like, 20 seconds time to kill it, and monsters are getting, like, a ridiculous amount of more damage. So, it shouldn't be the biggest deal, um... Of clearing everything off, right? And even if you don't get everything, it's not like the biggest deal. So, Legion just popped, getting active, Val Arc. And yeah. Almost the entire Legion just got blown up like that. It's like, the good thing about Val Arc is it has only two seconds soul gain prevention, right? And that basically means that after two seconds, I'm uh, I'm getting souls back in and then I can use the next Val Arc, you know? There is a lot of war hearts, um, there is a lot of like all kinds of stuff that you are finding in the Legion, um, as well as like a lot of rare packs, you know, with the Arch Nemesis. And that's why I also love the Ignite. So Val Arc is actually doing a shit ton of damage, right? And I don't really feel the need of like staying in combat, staying in melee range and whatnot. 
I just go in, you know, I do my Calandra, and uh, the Vile Arc has an, a lot of Ignite damage. So I'm not really too scared about the rear packs at all. I think it, it's scarier for the um, the Legion Generals because they're like hard to one-shot basically, right? Oh, shit. And uh, yeah, you can either go a simple way that you go in, you blow up the Legion, you search for a second one because the, the Scarab will give you one uh, Legion for sure, right? But since you have your Legion passives, you can actually proc uh, more than one Legion. And so you could search for it, or the way I do it, I also kill the map boss, because I think uh, the Hillock here, the blacksmith, is not really hard to deal with. He's mo um, and, you know, the more monster or bosses you kill, you always have, like, chances to drop another, like, different stuff based on your altars. Like, you can modify the strategy as much as you want. And why do I actually think that this is actually a good farming strategy, this league? Since we all know that the loot is kind of like a little bit uh, nerfed. So this is... I want to be clear here. This is just what I think, how it works. This might be different if somebody has a better idea here. Then please let me know in the comments. Because I don't want to like spread false information here, right? As far as I know, mo like the loot boxes, okay? The, 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 the treasure chests within a legion, they are not affected by any kind of quantity, rarity whatsoever. They never were, okay? I know that some people will say now, yo, I played Magic Finder with Legion, so yes, it affects the monsters that you are killing, like the monsters from the Legion, but it doesn't really affect the, the loot boxes whatsoever. And that's why I also believe that um, the loot boxes itself, they are not really affected by the change, you know? And I have sometimes maps with like ridiculous amounts of loot. So that is basically one single map. The way you make currency in here, besides the, the normal drops, I mean, that was actually a little bit of a poor map, but we're going to run a second one in a, in a bit, um, is that you have the Atlas passive trees with the Legion. And there is one that has a chance um, with additional war hordes and whatnot, a 0.6% chance for timeless splinters to drop as timeless emblems. They might think like, yo, 0.6%, it's like nothing, you know? But don't worry, the thing is like, you, you drop a lot of splinters basically, right? And a lot of those small little things are not even on my loot filter anymore because I don't care about the small ones because they don't really sell for a lot, right? But um, just today, um, I sold, I think it was, uh, where do we go here? I think I sold 13 sets for eight divines. And now I'm just like farming, you know? This is like, these emblems are not really by coming or sometimes rarely coming from actually getting 100 stacks. You're literally dropping emblems. And every time you drop a Marraketh emblem, that's like 45 or 50 chaos even, right? And considering the fact that I'm just spending two chaos for a map means that I'm gonna make here like easy, easy profit, right? Now let's take another Legion Scarab. Did I actually forgot to put them in? I don't think so. So, uh, just for showcase, we can actually pop a Legion over here, but as I said, this just adds another Legion for 6 Chaos. I personally don't think that's worth. Maybe if you invest more into your maps, you know, like, hire everything, if you really like Sextants and whatnot. But for the poor man strategy, I don't think this is necessary at all. Here we have a double Legion, so I'm just using my Val Arc again, right? Usually the first one just kills off 90%, if not more. Sometimes it can happen. I think I'm just missing the Helm Enchant that I can full clear a Legion. But sometimes you just shoot a second time and that's pretty much it, right? If I have a double legion like here, the way I approach it, so um, I'm just gonna pop this one up. And as soon as it pops, I can actually activate the second. Oh, I missed it. Satch. Okay, let me quickly load up another Val Arc. It's ready again now. And boom. This is... It just never gets old. I don't know, like, I so enjoy just running in and just blow up legions. It's just, it's just fun. So let's open some more war hordes. And sometimes you get like some ridiculous loot explosions. Sometimes I even think we are playing like uh, another leak, but <laughs> that's another topic, I guess. So let's wait for the next loot, uh, for the next um, thingy here. Ball arc, easy clap. A lot of things will die a little bit delayed because obviously we're a damage over time build. We're playing Ignite, so it's it's always the same principle. You know, you go in, Studio Val arc, and if it runs out or you haven't killed everything, then just kill a, a normal, like a couple monsters, you shoot your arc, you instantly get your ball arc back and just shoot an, a second time, right? Really enjoyable in my opinion. But you can use any other build as well, you don't have to like play arc, you know, it's just like what I'm currently playing and since I want to showcase my kind of st strategy here, I thought why not go over the build real quick as well, right? 
But there is going to be... I'm not going to talk too much about the build. You're gonna, um, I'm going to give you guys the uh, PUB in the description below. If you want to um, take a look. But I don't think it, this should be a build guide. Um, I think this is more like a, a mapping strategy. And as long as you can comfortably clear legions with whatever build you feel like. If it's Vala Ice Nova, if it's Winter Warp, if it's like... Uh, I don't know. Any other build that has good clear coverage, then you should be fine with this strategy, right? So... Kill the rest here, maybe click on some more loot boxes. I'm sure if I clicked all the war hordes. But as I said, like you can obviously you can invest more. So the difference between all the uh, the, um, the scarabs is that the poor man scarab, uh, scarab, the what is it? The rusted one is just adding a legion. The polished is adding war hordes to the legions. The Gilded, I think, is doing Generals, and the Winked is adding two Legion Stones or something like that. But the main course here is, um, especially if you have lower currency, you know, you don't really want to deal with, uh, with the Generals. I mean, the Generals itself, they are not bad, because they drop a lot of Splinters, means a higher chance of getting an Emblem, right? But if you need, like, half a minute just to kill uh, one of these dudes, then I, I don't know if it's, if it's worth your time, basically, right? Good, let's assume we just farmed, uh, this is just like loot from today, you get shit tons of incubators as well, so incubators is also a nice um, side income, you just pop it on and at some point they're just gonna pop, you know, you get like maps, you get currency, you get essence, you get whatever you want from uh, those incubators, even six link, whatnot, um, and then at some point you're gonna get the, um, as I said, the, the sets basically to sell. So my first initial thing was that I guess you go to TFT and sell those in bulk, but it turns out a lot of people are starting to do those, um, what do you say, legion farming strategies. And you barely get any extra, okay? So I think I think it's like 70 chaos if you buy each of them one separately. And you maybe get 75 or, or maybe 80 if you're selling it bulk. So it's, it would be a 10 chaos extra. But, you know, the big money are those two. And you drop them naturally, so that's also nice. And then, also, uh, as I said, like, all the other stuff that you randomly get for Legion. And I think this is just a fun alternative of uh, mapping here, right? That you just blow th uh, things up. I think it's very fun. And I can definitely recommend it. Especially since, like, just in the last 10 hours or so, I made, like, 15 or 20 Divines um, to invest into my character. And that will give me, hopefully, some better gear in the further progress. Good, let's talk about the Atlas tree real quick. So basically, nothing too special, blocking out every, th uh, every single League mechanic, okay? I only have the Legion over here. Then, obviously, taking all the Legion nodes, there is like four in total. One on the bottom, one here, one on the top side, or this is like a double, one here, and one is over here. Then, all the quantity nodes, all the small nodes here that give you increased effect of non-unique maps, as well as like... Word of Exarch, since I'm farming currently Searing Exarch, you could also do the same on the uh, Eater of Worlds, whatever you want to farm, blue or red. Because the um, the currency that you get here, they sell... Um, this is it's so weird, man. There is so many freaking tabs. You know, back in my days, you had a currency tab. And that doesn't have a, a general exotic and fragments with breach scare. I, I like this, you know, it's it's very like nice to have. But sometimes if I, if I look for a currency type, then I'm like browsing my tabs and I'm like, wait, wait, where is it, you know? Um, so what I was saying, shit, I lost track, I lost track, oh yeah, the special currency, these ones in bulk sell for quite a bunch of currency, like no joke, because I'm literally just uh, bought like yesterday a couple just to get my exposure and my ignite spread on my gloves, and I, th I think I spent like a divine or one and a half divines just by those small little thingies, right, and if I say 58, how much would that be, it's probably two chaos per piece, non-bulk, you know, so if I say, hey, I want to buy 50 of those, I probably get three or four chaos a piece. So this is like two divines just like that, you know. So as I said, a lot of bubblegum currency, a lot of th uh, stuff that you can uh, convert in the long term. Good. Let's go back to my Atlas tree. Um, I think the only thing that's really necessary is you have your Legion stuff and you have the small notes and travel notes. Everything else, if you go then for, for example, stacks and modifiers have additional use. Trines is a good adaption because they will help you with the clearing aspect. You could even go further and take the Pact with Energy, which gives you maximum resistance when every time you use a Voltaxic Sulfide, right? You also get movement speed and increased damage. And since I don't know a lot of people that are farming Nico and you have those missions, you could pop them in extra, run around, click on the Voltaxic, um, like the, the Sulfide 
The thing is, right, get extra damage and speed and have an easier time blowing up that Legion. But other than that, feel free to just experiment. There is like no rocket science about these um, Atlas passive trees whatsoever. Use what you want to, basically. Just make sure if you're farming Legion that you take all the Legion stones, right? Or the Legion nodes. Good. Makes me uh, the next thing, map sustain. How does my map sustain look like? Um, I'm not really keeping track because I'm not running out of maps, okay? So as of right now, um, let me see. I have... This is just from running my dunes over here. And then I have also the ash and wood that, uh, that I have a couple. Why is that? So basically, I have out of my 12 um, favorite maps, I have 12, uh, 11 times dunes and 1 time ash and wood. Why is that? Because ash and wood is directly next to dunes map. And the way it works is like, <clears throat> if you have, like, I'm not even running uh, any of, like, a higher chance of, like, dropping higher tier maps or something like that. None of those, right? Oh, actually, one. I forgot to respect that. Doesn't really matter. But um, mainly you will be able to sustain the dunes within the dunes, especially when you use, like, your incubators and stuff. Um, but if you run out of dunes, your connected maps will drop or way more likely to drop connected maps, right? And that's why I have one Ashenwood. So Ashenwood is also a very wide open layout. That's the main reason why I'm running Dunes as well. Um, so if I run Ashenwood, I'm still doing the same thing. I'm still popping in my Rusted Legion Scarab because it is still a wide open map. It's still easy to run. And we should get rewarded with a bunch of Dunes map back so I can farm Dunes again, right? So this is like a, a ping pong kind of situation. I mean, since I'm not really having to say, wait, oh, wait I need to loot this map, right? Oh, did I need to loot, loot, loot? Ah! Okay, for the video's sake, okay? I just bricked some loot, but doesn't matter. Here would be the same scenario. I have my Legion thingy in here, my Rusted Legion Scarab. As I said, map layout is open. The boss is not too hard uh, either way, but I just want to see how many dunes I will drop. And now probably for the sake of the video, I'm not going to drop a single one, right? But I had, run uh, had run a couple of these maps and I got like... Sometimes even five or six maps back in return. And all were dunes basically, right? So that was actually pretty good. Now, another beautiful Legion. It can get a little bit laggy, but I think... The Val Arc Legion clear lag is the only acceptable form of lag that I tolerate in this game. Okay, that was a complete, uh, a complex sentence, but I think you guys get the idea, right? Because you know, you know, as soon as it starts lagging, you know shit is gonna, like, die, you know? And that's actually quite nice. Now, Legion... One press of a button. Beautiful. Exalted Orb. Did... Okay, so I still think that I found more Divine Orbs than Exalted Orbs. This is probably my my bad luck in the other leagues that turns out to be very profitable this league. Because I, I think, like, maybe I have, like, total, like, five Divines. No, wait. Five Exalts, maybe. And a total of easily... I mean, I just dropped 5 today. I think I'm like 9 or 10 Divines in total that I found this League alone, right? Which obviously helps, so... I don't know if that's a streamer client. Streamer client activated. So this is the map boss. He actually literally dies within the Val Arc. Or was, no, was this an Exile or was this a map boss? Yeah, hard to say, man. Hard to say. Nice loot explosion. Some chests over here. There is a Maraketh, Splinters... I said, Marraketh are the ones, the yellow ones, that are actually bringing uh, the big pile of currency, basically. And then you also have, like, chances of finding, like, literally any other loot, right? And since I'm running this on a high-tier map, I also have kind of the chance of dropping a Mage Blood or a Headhunter or whatever, you know? Not saying it's gonna happen. Oh, a Marraketh Emblem! Yo, I just made uh, another 50 Chaos. So, the next 25 maps are already paid off. Isn't that beautiful, man? That's beautiful. It feels a little bit like cheating, though, because I know my investment. And when I see the outcome, I'm like, yo, this is actually nice. Okay. More legions, more legions. So, where is my maps, actually? It's like, I'm not too sure about clicking on altars. I think actually doing the Searing Exarch is actually a bit bad because there is a lot of like extra resistance, extra fire resistance and whatnot, which don't really help your arc build, right? Or your ignite build in that case. Wait, do you want to tell me I haven't dropped a single map here? Just for the sake of the video. And not... No, wait, this is the Exalted Orb from before, right? Yo, no cheating here. Wait, there is a Legion boss. 
But yeah, they, they can get very tanky, so it, it just based on your build. I can just say, because obviously I did not start out with an Eternity Shroud build, I started out with a normal uh, cheap budget version of this build, and I noticed that Legions, uh, the generals, are kind of hard, you know. Oh, actually, I did not drop a single map in here. Nice. But hey, I got a Marikev Stone, so that actually secures the next maps if I need some. But yeah, it does work. I have tested it and it actually works out that you just run a couple of these uh, Ashenwood maps and you should be fine. Dude, this time around I'm gonna loot the map, okay? Because, you know, money money is king here. But it feels like very good to run this uh, kind of strategy. Uh, if you have any more questions, then let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoy this kind of like uh, strategy guide because I'm not really known for doing those. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.